All right, we are here with Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Tim Doobie. Tim, how are you today? I'm is, great. I'm, isn't uh, that when you're supposed to have like the crowd noise? Like, are you supposed? We you can, can if you'd dude, like. That, yeah, let's. We gotta <laughs> spice it up. Let's try it. Hold on, where's the hat? <laughs> isn't that dope? This is great. All right, let's do that again. What an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Tim Doobie, everyone. Wow. Thank you guys so much. I can't believe this many people showed up on a Friday. Seriously, this is like more people that show up for a weigh in. <laughs> Loaded. <laughs> First time in front of a live audience. Tim, how are you today? Uh, I'm well, and it's not as many people that show up in, in uh, Louisiana, Toledo Bend. There was like 15,000 people there. Wow. Really? At weigh in. It was Lord a party. Have mercy. So, first year in the Elite Series, I can imagine it's, what, been stressful? Has it been uh, super fun? Can you explain your experience so far? Uh, well, it's kind of like a mix of all the emotions. Stressful, fun, you know, uh, making the Elite Series was one of my dreams and fishing it and fishing the classic. And it doesn't matter how tough the fishing is. You just have to find them. Because the Elite Series are the best of the best guys. They catch them every single place we go. Like, you need, your goal has to be 20 pounds no matter what, um, which is very challenging, especially fishing a lot of different parts of the country that I'm not so much familiar with. Um, but it's been a lot of fun, too, just traveling, again, seeing the country, meeting all of your childhood heroes, and then fishing against your childhood heroes, not even meeting them. Uh, they're, they're now the competition. It's just been, it's been a lot of fun. It's uh, a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. but it's fun work. Can you explain a little bit of that work that goes into it? Like the prep and like the studying that you do before you even like get on the water? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for the tournament, we'll, we'll go in the reverse order here. So for the tournament, we have, four days of official tournament before that tournament you have three days of official practice and that's sun up to sundown so earlier in the year they're like 12 hour days and then right now they are 15 or 16 hour days and coming out of wheeler lake it was 90 degrees every single day of practice and spending 16 hours out there it, it's grindy it's very grindy out there um but then even before that I go and I spend a week on the lake for pre-practice, just running around, learning the lake, trying to catch some fish, um, but really just trying to understand where the best habitat for them are. So like where they're going to be setting up, where they should be going, and then where they are currently. I think what you just said is is huge. And the pre-practice thing is good. And sure, you can catch fish when you're there a, a month prior, but you truly need to know or have an idea of where those fish are going to end up because they're not going to be exactly where you left them. No. And, and the off limits period is 28 days ahead of time. So a lot, a lot changes in three days, two days, a single day. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything you find in pre-practice that has fish on it, won't have fish on it during the tournament. Um, especially in the spring, especially in the spring and even, even sometimes the summer, and you're really just looking for areas where they could set up, whether it be an offshore ledge that, you know, has some chunk rock on it or, you know, you're looking for deep water near it or, you know, the first deep water near a, a major spawning cove. Stuff where fish are going to be transitioning out of their springtime going into their summertime, but you're looking during springtime. Mm -hmm. So no fish are out there yet. So it it kind of feels like a waste of time, but in the end, it's never a waste of time when you spend the day on the water. And even before I get there for that week of pre-practice, I'm, I'm on YouTube. I'm all over the internet searching tournament yeah. results, yeah. seeing what kind of weight is to be expected, what kind of seasonal patterns are to be expected. Because like I said, on a lot of these lakes down south, I have little to zero experience on them. And, you know... I always say to myself, a bass is a bass is a bass. Mm -hmm. They're going to set up on structure. They're ambush predators. They're opportunistic eaters. So a bass is a bass is a bass, but they eat different things. They set up on different different uh, structure or cover. And so it's just a lot of adjusting. So 
has there been anybody in the elite series that has changed your perception of studying or going into these tournaments that has really helped you or benefit you in previous to when you weren't in the, in the elite series? Um, or is it really like just cutthroat? Like there's really no help at all. Um, it's definitely cutthroat, uh, but the elite series is very clicked up. So you have your little groups of people that share information with each other. um, And and you have to have it. You have to have a network on the water that you can trust the guy that you're telling info to and you can trust what they're saying back to you. Um, And typically it's like two or three guys that I talk to pretty consistently. And, you know, some of us or or some of the guys, it's just like, hey, I'm catching him in 18 feet of water on the break or, hey, I'm you know, I'm catching them on a drop shot or they're eating the crankbait pretty good. It's something along those lines. Um, and then, you know, I travel with Will Davis Jr. and Mark Menendez and Will and I will sit there and we'll share waypoints and exact spots where like, hey, I think you could get a limit here. Right. And just like it might not be a, a winning spot, but say you go catch two really good ones and you're struggling to get a bite. And we now have that spot where you can show up and catch a two pounder. Or you can catch a couple two pounders, um, but I, I like I said I pre practice for every single tournament this year. I'll, I'll pre practice next year um, because I I feel like the the most invaluable thing is spending time on the water and getting familiar with with the lake you're on. Of well, it takes me three minutes to run from this island to this island, or it takes me. 45 minutes to go from this creek to take off just knowing all of the travel time and just like i said getting familiar with the body of water so you travel with will davis jr mark mark menendez yep and you're part of this rookie class this year has there been any sort of hazing or any sort of uh troublemaking for the rookie class well just for you rather uh that you've experienced <laughs> i was gonna say there's definitely been uh some trouble no no not not really for me uh you know i have pretty thick skin and uh you know i don't I, it's a professional sport yeah and i treat everyone with professionalism that i would like to be treated back with mm-hmm. and uh no one's ever so to speak, cross the line and yeah, no confrontations. No, nothing yet. Nothing crazy. Nothing too bad. So what has been, uh, what has been like the biggest change that you've experienced from not really, well, not being in the elite series to now that you've, you've really had to drastically change. Um, I mean, l- relearning, how to how to catch bass because very i was very not set in my ways but you know back home i knew what they were doing this time of year i knew what they were doing what they were going to be doing in in a week i knew what they were going to be doing in two weeks and you knew their seasonal patterns and you know like just time on the water back home knowing that like hey this dock is great in september but it's there's nothing on it in august and just relearning pretty much how to catch them being open-minded. Open-minded, open yes. Open-minded, that's, that's a great. Just knowing when to no scrap pre-con- something and, and just, man, I got to get, get off get off a ledge. I just got to get on the bank. Yeah, no, no preconceived frog, exact notions, thing. pretty much. Just open mind and just uh, fishing to your strengths as well because you can kind of catch them however you want to catch them, especially on certain lakes and especially just fishing how I like to catch them. Right. So what has been the most entertaining lake to fish on so far this season? Uh, I mean, I, w- I would have to say Toledo Bend. Uh, the very first one there, I, I, <laughs> I went out day one, caught three bass, but I would go back there any day of the week. Like anytime you set the hook there, it could be a seven to 11 pounder. And I mean, talk about getting thrown to the wolves. Toledo Bend is gigantic. Like, you've never been there before, like, just standing timber, wild. I mean, just a huge place. Boat lanes, you've never run yeah. boat lanes before. And yeah, boat lanes are boat lanes are tricky, and there is a, a map chip that you can get, 
and it shows you the boat lanes of where to run, but then the boat lanes are colored. So you have like green means go, yellow means caution, red like idle it. And so even though it's a boat lane, red red means you better have the leash on. Yeah, you better have. Oh, I <laughs> I wouldn't go any of those places without a leash on. Yeah, no doubt. Because you never know. And then you know the the wood breaks or the timber breaks because it's getting older, right. and it just floats. And there was many times where you know you're taking off at seven o'clock and it got light at seven fifty five, and it's not really bright out, and then you're running. 70 miles an hour down the lake. Mm -hmm. I will say, I'm glad you said that, Joe, because whenever we did, so I fished uh, the Tuesday nighter as a co-angler against Joe and Tim. Uh, That was pretty intimidating first time. But whenever I got in the boat, I asked my... uh, Your partner? Driver? Partner. partner, My partner. partner. I asked him do you have a leash on? And he said, no. And it did kind of worry me there for a second. Cause I'm so aware of what happens when you sure what could happen if you don't. Um, so yeah, that, that did bother me a little bit, but you it's know, a nice peace of mind. Yeah, it is. I, I didn't ever understand it until getting in the boat Tuesday. And I was like, Oh, it actually is like, it's kind of worrying. It kind of sits in the back of your head, but, um, what that a motor might come and hit you in the back of the head. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Because we see all these uh, these incidents that happen, but um, so you're here in between events. Yes. Do you have a? I know you have a game plan, but what is the game plan going into this event? So we have Smith Lake coming up. Um, Smith Lake is like a lake I've never really fished before. It, it has shades of Hartwell in it. Um, it's dominated by smallmouth bass. I'm sorry, spotted bass. Um, but then you can also throw in a kicker largemouth bass, but there's not a lot of largemouth in that lake. So it's pretty much the, the, the main game plan of next week is to not get hit by a wake boat <laughs> because it's 4th of July week uh, on Smith Lake, which is one of the biggest party lakes in the country. So first goal is not to get hit by a wake boat. And then the, the second the second goal is, um, you know, just kind of catch what I can catch. So a, th- I mean, that's a pretty opportunistic lake, right? It is. So it's deep. It's clear. Bait does weird stuff sometimes. And- yep. So you're going to have a top water on your deck no matter what time of year it is there. Um, and it's pretty much going to be dominated by forward-facing sonar. So... It's going to be, you know, you're going to be fishing spotted bass in probably anywhere from 25 to 70 feet of water. Right. While dodging wake boats. <laughs> Could you, that brings up a good question. Could you name some of the lakes that wouldn't be dominated by forward facing sonar? I, I mean, the last one we were at, Lake Wheeler. Yeah. Uh, or Wheeler Lake. Um, that was dominated. Uh, who won it? That was Cliff Prince mm-hmm. um, throwing a chair bait up on on the bars and grass and the shell bar. And, you know, he I don't think he looked down once. He mm-hmm. was just fishing. Right. Um, and then I know that there are a lot of other guys doing that as well. Fishing, you know, when you're fishing dirt shallow like that, forward facing isn't really a player. Same thing with like Murray. Uh, you know, you had your morning kind of commotions happening where all those herring would go over the points and blow up. And you're just... I call it eye scope. You're using your eyeballs, not <laughs> not the uh, not the fish finder. Right. Um, and just touching on that real quick with Murray, y- you could have a place, y- a starting spot that you thought was absolutely amazing, and then you have these five to seven pound stripers come in, and guess what? Those those largemouth are gone. Yeah, they get bullied right out. Out of there. Yeah, tough. How long have you known Joe? That's a good question. I, I was thinking about that the other day. He was always hmm. around. He was just like that little, <laughs> like that little brother. Like he was just always around and like, just like 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 a little ankle biter. No, he's he's, <laughs> he's always been there. Um, God, I I can't put. It. It's been a lot of years. Twenty twelve, probably twenty ten. <laughs> maybe yeah, longer than that. Maybe I. It was definitely longer than that because I started fishing New Hampshire Bass Nation two thousand nine yeah. ten. Yeah. Gotcha. And so he, he, I bet he I got he got my attention faster than I got his attention because <laughs> I'm like what's who is this kid? 
like, who's this kid? Who's this, who's this kid catching them? Like, I just noticed the boat. The boats changed. You started in like a 17 footer, and then it was like a 19 footer, and then it's 21 foot Phoenix. And I'm like, this kid's coming. Big <laughs> time. <laughs> And he's so catching them. Joe almost predicted you just being a pro way back when, essentially. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, there, there's a huge difference between a local stick mm-hmm. and a professional. There is a massive difference. And I am somewhere in between there right now, <laughs> currently. You're polishing it. You're just polishing yeah. it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's. Like I That's said, you a, get set in your ways. It set in your ways and this this whole other thing on the professional side that people tend to forget about. Everybody just thinks you go out there and fish. Mm-hmm. You have sponsor obligations. Yep. You're doing podcasts. I'm pretty sure Tim would rather be on the water right now. <laughs> it's 91 degrees. It's really nice out. But they probably so just started pulling water. They probably just started moving some. So, you know, well, we thank you for things. being here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate <laughs> the invite. I'm just saying, there's a lot of the things that uh, goes into being a professional. How how long have you been here, like staying in between events since last week and next week? Uh, well, I'll be here for seven days total. Okay. Um, but we were doing the math the other day, and it's I, I've been in Kentucky for a full month by the end of this week. Good experience throughout, throughout the year. Oh, okay. All right. Throughout the year. Oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> pre-practice for Texas events. Yeah. Uh, the classic pre-practice. Mm-hmm. They come in and then then coming back to the tournaments. It, it, it's it's kind of a good. It's, it's a good. My it's very place centralized. Is, yeah, it's just right there. It's yeah. just when you you really don't want to drive anymore, and it's like just the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Cause I start getting cranky and when I'm in the truck. So, so when people ask me like, Oh, what's it like being a professional bass angler? I'm like, you better like driving the truck mm. because all you do is drive. Yeah. I've done 30,000 miles on my truck since January. So two and things then, he's learned. He needs a gas sponsor <laughs> and fishing down in the South. He needs a Pedialyte sponsor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pedialyte was the un- unsung hero of last week because I don't know how I would have made it without it because you can't you can't hold on to water. It's <laughs> your sweat is coming out of every pore in your body when it's ninety six degrees with like eighty eight percent humidity or ninety percent humidity. No wind. Yeah. No wind. We'll be sending that clip to Pedialyte. Maybe we can. Get, we should. We can get you a check from them. There we go. <laughs> no, no, I'm not looking for money. Just product. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe some money. Maybe some money. <laughs> yeah, never gonna say no to money. That's awesome. Uh, well, I mean, is there anything that you want to say, um, coming off of it? I mean, obviously, like he said, it's a really great day. How many days of these seven days have you fished Kentucky Lake? Um, I fished every day I've been here except for Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday I didn't fish. I took Tuesday off. You need to take an off day every now and again. This is a mental health week. It was. Yeah. Real relaxing. Yes. Sleeping in, you know, catching up on some sleep. Um, because like I said, the, those tournament days last week or the, the pre-practice days, you're on the water at five and you get off the water at eight 30 and then you eat dinner. And before you know, it's 10 o'clock, you know, you take a shower, you go to bed, you wake up again at four 30, four or four. My alarm was four 15 mm-hmm. to get to the lake. So it's not a lot. You don't have a lot of downtime. It's like during that, tournament week. It's like that schedules. movie, Groundhog Day. Just th- It's just the same thing happens every single day. Yep. So what was the transition from, like whenever you got the call or the, the notice that you were invited to be on the Elite Series, what was that transition like going from not being on the Series to all of a sudden being in the Elite Series? I, I mean, night and day. It's, I I don't even know how to really describe it. I remember being asked to, you know, you qualify for the elite series and, you know, my knees got pretty wobbly. I was like, whoa, really? Because, you know, I just, I qualified for the classic that same tournament. Yeah. And I I knew about the classic. I never knew about the elite series until like 10 minutes after I got the plaque for making the classic. And then they're like, oh, Chris Bose walks over and goes, hey, uh, you qualify for the elite series. You want to do it? I'm like, whoa. (laughs) So how much of 
and this is a really loaded question, but how much does life change in what you what you did and trying to fish events around? Uh, I'm going to say, quote unquote, normal life yeah. versus now where your normal life is. You're basically just living on the water, living on the road, living um, on the road. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I quit my job um, because there's no way you can have a job, a, a nine to five job that you have to go in and fish the elite series. It's not possible. Um, so I really went all in, quit my job, <clears throat> started my own business, Tim Doobie Fishing LLC, and um, really just started preparing, organizing tackle, looking at the schedule of the Elite Series, and just started pretty much doing research on every single lake, as much info as I could gather, taking all these notes on each lake that, you know, if, if someone in a YouTube video said something, I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll make a note of it. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm back on that lake, I'll pull my notes back out and sit there and reread everything I took notes on and even sometimes pull up the same video. But it's just I, I never expected my life to change like that. Um, I'm very happy for the experience. and I'm, I'm re- super, super thankful. I, I said yes, and I did do it. And I have all these amazing companies that you know, stepped up and sponsored someone who I, I didn't have a single sponsorship fishing locally. Mm-hmm. I just bought the stuff I liked. That, that was it. And now I have, you know, great companies supporting me of all the stuff that I like. And I just never, never expected to be here. Can you talk more about, you mentioned Tim Doobie Fishing LLC. Do you want to talk about that? What you, what you do? Yeah, I started my own clothing company. Everything's on back order because we can't keep up. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Got a brand new coming out next week. <laughs> <laughs> The sorry. Hi, Tim. Great seeing you, man. There's some editing right there. <laughs> it was like a special button you hit to. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, click I'm, edit that. No. Edit that. Edit that. I'll just this crowd. I can't believe they have been just on the edge of their seat. Yeah, that's right. Give it up for the crowd. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, there they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, guys. There they are. There's one guy that's really energetic. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> screaming. <laughs> this is bourbon country. <laughs> Well, Tim, thank you so much for coming by, uh, taking time out of your day. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's always good coming by and seeing all the guys at Precision Sonar. This uh, this new building is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, like if not- you're if you're in the the Benton, Kentucky area, yeah, you Marshall guys, County, yeah. Marshall County, you guys got to swing over and see this place. Give them a tour. Yeah, absolutely. Come see Joe. I'll give you a tour and pick up your leash. That's it. Leash mounts the whole nine yards. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys, that is a wrap on another episode. Be sure to follow us on all of our socials, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. Send us a DM if you want to hear a specific topic or even a guest. Give us some feedback. Once again, we appreciate you for listening.